all you cool cats and kittens. Welcome to a new episode of What's PCJ Watching. I am your friendly neighborhood host, PCJ, the pop culture junkie. On today's episode, I am joined by two very special guests. They are the co-hosts of a local Houston podcast called A Thing. Please welcome the dynamic duo of Nancy and Corey. Guys, welcome uh-huh. to the show. Hi. Uh-huh. Hi My name was said first. We're doing great. I'm in a better mood because I'm apparently more important than Corey. I mean, all of my marketing material has your name first. Thank you for having us on, though, Mr. Junkie, while we have a little uh, squabble, apparently. Apparently, yeah, we're, but we welcome that. There's, there's no judgment here. It's all good. No, so I mean, we could, gotta have a little tension. <laughs> gotta have a little, little bit. A little Just bit. enough to know it's there. Yes. So if you could, please, if we can keep the tension to a, mi- a, a low for a moment, tell my amazing audience, a little bit about your podcast and what kind of topics they can expect to hear from you. Well, we are actually rebranding and we're now a Let's Talk, but not just any Let's Talk. We're the world's worst Let's Talk, where we talk about all types of happenings in news, video games, pop culture, tech, everything in between, and also just anything that we find interesting. But not politics. As much as we pretend that's the truth. <laughs> or sports. Again, as much as we pretend that's the truth. And it's always great when you're on with us as you yes, know, I, our wrestling I, correspondent. I, Thank you. I, I do what I can, and I, and I appreciate all the time you guys have had me join in on, on many topics and uh, conversations, and we seem to have a good time. And I thought, you know what, we got to get you on this program because we always get into some kind of side talk before and after all of our uh, recordings on your show, talking about movies, shows, and I'm like, I got to have you guys on because I know you guys are going to bring some awesome picks to what PCJ is watching episode. So I here and here you are. So thank you for do- uh, joining me and being a part of this. You set the bar so high, and I'm only going to take that bar, and light it, up, and shove it. In. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're giving us way too much credit, bud. <laughs> Well, hey, I opened we're... with the world's worst let's talk. So like we need that bar alone. so tall. I can <laughs> so high. <laughs> well, just like many of our listeners, uh, us included, we're all still in a uh, semi lockdown stage right now with everything that's happening out in the real world. And so what else is there to do for most of us other than binge watch movies and shows, correct? So I know that's what I've been doing with a lot of my free time, which I don't really have a lot of free time with a 10-month-old, but when I have a chance, that's what I'm trying to do to not you know, completely go insane being locked down in, indoors for so long. So on this week's episode, usually what we do, of course, is I share my picks from uh, different streaming services that, that I have access to. But this time around, what I decided to do is I wanted to invite you, two of you on and ask you each to give uh, at least just one recommendation, and hopefully it's on a streaming service of some sort that people will be able to uh, have access to to watch, uh, whether it's like Disney+, Plus, Netflix, Hulu, etc. Uh, but share a pick of each of y'all's, and I'll be sharing a personal pick of mine as well. Maybe it's something that people haven't heard of in a long time, doesn't get enough credit. It's one of the you know gems that's considered you know, to be truly underrated, underappreciated and it needs a second viewing and so i'm really 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 interested to see uh what recommendations you two have uh, for our uh, listening audience today well i know i have a doozy um <laughs> mine is nothing <laughs> of what you just mentioned <laughs> yeah it's all that and more <laughs> is what it is correct i mean yeah. well you see she's she talked about setting that bar real low gotta stand understand we're going for a limbo championship today <laughs> How low can you go? Not low enough, because we can still go lower. (laughs) All right, uh, folks, watching and listening, you heard it. So uh, sit back, relax, and just and enjoy the shit show. (laughs) Enjoy it. Enjoy it all. Prepare yourself. Uh, So on this episode, we're going to be picking our movie selection, our movie recommendation. So each one of us will be sharing our pick of what we will be watching this week while we're all still on lockdown mode. So I'm going to swing it on over to Nancy to kick us off and share with us what is your pick for a movie. I appreciate the lady's first sentiment, so thank you. 
Um, so this one comes from our Mousy Overlords, Disney and Disney Plus, and it is one of my favorite Disney Channel original movies of all time that only got to be on Disney Channel during Halloween for two years because eventually it was removed because it was quote unquote too scary to a bunch of little whiny babies. Um, I am, of course, talking about Don't Look Under the Bed, a Disney Channel original movie from 1999. And I can't tell you how many times I tell people to watch this movie or how it's one of my favorites from Disney Channel and how absolutely underrated it is because of how small of a window it was actually shown. I was very fortunate to be able to watch it both both years that it was on Disney Channel and it had me hooked. Um, it's a very it's a very scary premise too, a very interesting premise, and it's not something that Disney's ever really explored. Um, it deals with imaginary friends, and I know growing up, I had a couple imaginary friends. I don't know about you guys. I don't know if that was something y'all had. Did you have imaginary friends? Because I know I still don't have any real friends, so most of mine are still fake. That's right. I'm only a figment of your imagination. Man, I need to really talk to my psychiatrist about that because I really need some mess, something to get rid of you. Ouch. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a sassy mood today. Um, but yes, so don't look under the bed. It is a movie where... Um, some strange things are happening in a small town called Middleburg, which is basically a tri-state area, very suburban. Nothing ever happens. White picket fences. But all of these little mishaps keep happening. And weird little things are happening town to the boogeyman. And the boogeyman is the main, the main antagonist. And you have an imaginary friend who is then able to be seen by a freshman in high school who should technically be in eighth grade. Um, and the whole show is about basically figuring out what's causing all of these bad things to happen and how they can stop them from happening. Drama happens. Um, our imaginary, our imaginary friend also has some changes that he undergoes as well too, but that's about as far as I will go into it because I really think it's just best that you just watch it as a whole. Um, and it just, it has a very, original unique and fun take on on imaginary friends on the boogeyman and it's not something disney's ever really done at all since so it, it's it's left a lasting impression of me forever and i talk i will talk about this movie until my dying breath <laughs> um <laughs> all right well uh it's definitely something i have not heard of uh so i'm yeah, going no to be checking that out myself no one has yeah, no one has. People look at me like I'm crazy when I say, oh, don't look at that. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and, you know, I'll, I'll go into it a little bit. Um, but, you know, like as a whole, the production is great. Like for me, like the costume design um, was absolutely fantastic. And it was terrifying. That's why they took it off of Disney was because it was way too scary for people. And I could see why, because the way that they designed the boogeyman and like, like just the costumes and the the uh the makeup in general is, is very creepy it is very well done um and of I course mean, I, you've got like the hot mom and the the dad that doesn't give a crap about anything so it hits all the tropes but in a very good way okay excellent i mean i'm intrigued already uh, it sounds like a lot of elements that i can connect to other movies that i grew up watching that had a lot of the same scary moments yet they were made for kid you know type movies that you wouldn't expect to watch as a kid nowadays because we're just living in a different world of course uh but yeah you said this is available through disney so it's on disney plus so i'll be adding that to my watch list yes and i can't wait to hear all your thoughts on it because i can't talk about this with enough people so i need yes. all the feedback possible and i will be doing that uh make sure everyone listening hashtag what's pcj watching follow that because I'll be posting my uh, reactions to these uh, recommendations that I'll be watching uh, from both did. Corey and Nancy's picks. So stay tuned for that. So for, again, hashtag what's PCJ watching. All right, Corey, you're up. We got uh, something interesting from Nancy. We got a scary uh, thriller suspense, wild adventure. So what do you have for us? My, the movie I've chosen today is supposed to be all of those things. <laughs> 
in the most <laughs> gloriously cheesy B movie horrible graphic fashion you could get from what was originally in a TV a sci fi channel original movie. So already I went ahead the oh, no. and picked okay. Six Headed Shark Attack, which is currently streaming on Prime Video. Um, personally, I love cheesy, stupid movies that you know you're just gonna watch and are a train wreck. So you're just on for the ride. It's just a great popcorn flick, right? This is the train yeah. wreckiest of train wrecks I've ever seen, exactly. Nice. I mean, it's got it all. It's got a six headed shark, it's got couples therapy, it's got People on boats, like in every shark movie. But the catch is, this shark can spider walk on land using its heads. <laughs> oh, because that's how sharks walk. Got it. When you have six heads, yeah. You come on the land and move very slowly and quickly up mountains and attack your enemies. Okay, I have a logistics question for you, though. Do the sharks alternate what heads they walk on, or is it the same set of heads? And like, how no, did they just? How did they have that hierarchy established? So I think it's the same set of heads that's walked on at all times. Because as it loses heads, it just rips them off and doesn't care. Okay. So There's how really... do you establish the hierarchy of heads? Like, who who drew the shortest straw? <laughs> I'm assuming the hierarchy goes center head and on the way out around it. I'm not sure. You'd have to ask the creators of the movie, but I don't think they put that much thought into it. Since this is like, I think the third or fourth movie in this series. It oh, just no. keep adding heads. So, so before this was the five-headed shark attack. Oh my! Oh so, lord! <laughs> does this exist in the same universe as the other? You know, your Sharknado, your Sharktopus, other things like that. Does this exist in the same universe? You know, I I would really hope that sci-fi put a more forethought to have a shared shark disaster universe because that would just be perfect to have a movie where you could have the six-headed shark, the Sharktopus, and the Sharknado team up. <laughs> I you don't know, know if I could be mentally or physically prepared for that kind of movie, though. Honestly, if you like really bad movies, if you like movies you know you're going to sit down and just want to laugh at because it's just funny in every unintentional way it should be, this is right up that alley. Sound kind of like our Let's Talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if I could personify <laughs> us as a movie, go ahead and watch this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I definitely like that choice. Yeah, that's a good choice for, especially right now, where we're dealing with all kinds of crazy, you know, serious stuff in the in our in our real lives, and you got to still take a moment to just you know pull back and laugh. And what a great pick right there to to just take your mind off things. And so good good choice there, Corey. Eh, I mean, I enjoyed it. What can I say? It was really just a fun watch, and it's really not that long. So, oh, well, there you go. No com- non-committal. Right up my alley. I like it. So what do you have for us, Mr. PC and Jay? Well, okay, so I chose a movie that's uh, currently streaming on Amazon Prime. And to me, this is a movie that doesn't get a lot of attention. It doesn't get a lot of uh, talk about it at all. I think it's kind of just been forgotten or people never knew it existed. Uh, So I am an 80s child slash 90s child because I grew up through both the decades but uh i grew up with the john hughes movies your your 16 candles pretty in pink etc you know, all those breakfast fire. club yeah st Elmo's fire that's one that doesn't get you know, remembered a lot you know everyone remembers breakfast club and 16 candles but not that so that one's one of my favorites <laughs> the movie i chose and maybe you've heard of it is hiding out this movie stars john crier from pretty in pink of course and later on uh, two and a Half Men, and also recently played Lex Luthor on, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Supergirl, I believe. Yes. But you have John Cryer and Keith Coogan, who most people know him from uh, Don't Tell Mom Babysitter's Dead and Adventures in Babysitting. And uh, this movie is, it's a John Hughes movie meets Wall Street meets The French Connection. That's a good way to sum it up. Uh, John Cryer, he plays a Wall Street uh, stockbroker, and he and two of his uh, co uh, uh, employees, uh, co workers, they accidentally somehow get uh, tricked into uh, laundering money for the mob, uh, and the uh, mobster gets uh, arrested and is on trial, and the, the three stockbrokers are awaiting to testify. 
which of course means they're sitting ducks and uh, they become uh, targets for a hitman to take them out before they can uh, they can uh, go to trial and uh, testify. Well, one of the spoiler alert, one of the guys gets taken out. John Cryer ends up fleeing the city before the assassin and assassin can take him down, and he runs off to hide with his cousin Patrick, played by Keith Coogan. And the only way he can uh, manage to survive is by disguising himself as a high school kid to go to high school with his cousin. And uh, that's where he's hiding out. So he has to go from being a stockbroker, Wall Street, uh, living the life, uh, down to being a high school kid, uh, dealing with teachers and boyfriends and girlfriends and bad lunch. It's just everything I love. Bad lunch is the best slash work. Slash worst, so I guess. Yes. yes. Uh, so I'm curious, either one of you have ever heard of this movie? I have not, but I plea that it was before my time because I am, in fact, a child. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I get a pass. It? I don't think I've seen it. I know I've, I'm familiar with the plot mm-hmm. you've described, but I can't mm-hmm. say I've actually seen the movie. I, I just can't. I It's one of those movies that came on. Uh, I know I saw it when I was probably like 13 years old. Uh, and it was, this was like after years after it had come out in theaters. But um, I never saw it in theaters, of course. But it's one of those movies that would show up at like 11 o'clock on Channel 39 uh, on a like a Saturday night, Sunday night, something. And you just start watching it, it gets hooked. And then every time it comes on, I'm like, okay, it's on. I got to watch it. It's just uh, it's so bad. It's good. And I see when you watch it, you can see where, okay, it's not as big of a, and it's, I don't believe it's got anything to do with John Hughes himself, uh, but it is your high school uh, type of movie in the eighties. And everyone thinks of John Hughes when they, you know, talk about high school movies in the eighties and such, but uh, it just, yeah, I don't know what it is about the movie. I just love it. Uh, Seeing him trying to pretend he's a high school kid, even though uh, his character, John Cryer, he's supposed to be like 30 and, uh, one of the uh, high school girls, of course, begins to become attracted to him and wants to date him, even though she's dating like the class president who now wants to beat him up, even though it's like you're trying to beat up a guy that's like 15 years your senior. And the whole time he's being still hunted down by the uh, mobster's assassin. And it's just and at the same time, he's still supposed to try to do his schoolwork. And it's just, yeah, it's like, yeah. But it's so it has a lot of real serious moments in it that takes away from it just being like a cheesy comedy. It is got a little bit of everything in it, but uh, some serious moments in there where he really is being gunned down, chased after, and you really are like, okay, this could take a dark turn any minute, but it, there's still some funny stuff happening. But I, I love it. It's just a cheesy good movie, though. It sounds like it. So I think I will be adding that to my watch list just because I'm curious. And I do love this entire era of movies. So I'm glad you brought one up to my radar for me to check out. That was my duty. That was my job, and I, I think I met. It. Okay, good. Yeah, I'll definitely <laughs> watch it. I always need right. something to watch. Yeah, I, I recommend it. Well, that's it, folks. That is our recommendations for this week's episode of What's PCJ Watching? And again, this was amazing and wonderful to have the two co hosts from A Thing. Again, they are a local Houston area podcast. Guys, please let's let. Talk. <laughs> let's talk. A Thing. Let's talk. And uh, please let everyone know where can they subscribe and listen to your show? Absolutely. So we're pretty much everywhere podcasts are heard at this point. Um, You can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Google Play, iHeartRadio. You can find our main Anchor page. It's anchor.fm forward slash pod thing. Thank you again for joining me on this episode. And everyone, take care and watch some movies. This is PCJ and a thing signing out.